leading edge we would define as any place where when a worker's tied off with a fall arrest system and they take a fall, their lifeline, whether that's a rope lifeline, a cable lifeline, their lanyards, could strike that edge and the anchor point is going to be on one side of the edge and the worker is going to be on the other side of that edge. When we're working in a situation where we have a leading edge, we have to make sure that our arresting device stays with the worker themselves. When we're working with a uh, fall arrest lanyard, that means making sure that the shock pack, the shock absorbing device on that lanyard is always attached to the worker's back D-ring. The reason for that is, is when we fall over a leading edge, we create a point of friction. We've got that pinch point that's there. If our energy absorber is above that leading edge towards our anchor point, where that point of friction has happened, our energy is not going to transfer up to that anchor point or to where that shock pack potentially could be. It's not going to be controlled and decelerated down to an acceptable level, either the 1,800 pounds or 900, 900 pound average by ANSI, and the worker could be subjected to higher arresting forces or fall, fall forces there. When we have the arresting device with the worker and they take a fall over that edge, it's going to function, it's going to reduce the forces that are put both onto the fallen worker and onto that edge where the lifeline is contacting that, that edge. It has the ability to reduce how much swinging and bouncing that that lifeline has on that edge at the same time. We have leading edge, and we also have leading edges that incorporate sharp edge hazards into them. A good rule of thumb when we're looking at something that could be a sharp edge, whether it's a sharp steel edge or a sharp concrete edge, is anything with a radius on that edge that's less than a number two pencil. We want to start taking extra measures on that leading edge to protect against cut hazards on that lifeline from that sharp edge. A lot of this is being addressed through the, uh, through the ANSI standard. ANSI has come up with specific standards for leading edge and sharp edge and come up with specific ways for manufacturers and users to try to reduce the hazards, the cut hazards that go along with those leading edge and sharp edges. The ANSI sharp edge, ANSI defines a sharp edge as anything with 500 thousandths edge, 0 .0005 edge on the uh, steel edge and that is a that's very very sharp um, that's equivalent if you think of the cut end uh, of an i-beam that's about how sharp that is and there are some definite uh, hazards there when people are working on ed leading edges that are sharp and don't have the proper equipment or don't have their systems properly put in place we have the hazard of cutting the lifeline, definitely whether it's web or cable. We do have cut hazards that are there. There's also, as we said earlier, the clearance hazards that go along with that as well. Another version of SRL that you're hearing commonly in the market is that of an SRL LE. LE stands for leading edge. Now that's a specifically designed piece of equipment because again, same thing as with the lanyard connecting devices, we don't always have an anchorage that is here or above. And in that case, using a retractable with foot level tie off being worst case scenario, now we get to a condition where if this is my walking surface, this is attached to an anchor, and now my D-ring is up in the air, five foot occasionally based off of the worker's height, and then they fall, because this works like a seat belt, what happens is we're creating acceleration on a device that's not designed to take that. And worst case scenario is as we fall, what will happen is it will hit this edge and create what is referred to as a shearing effect. This is a condition that has sadly injured numerous workers and sadly made a few of them a fall fatality because the equipment wasn't designed to take that force in that condition, and it sheared, allowing them to continue falling to whatever the lower level was. 
One of the ways that you will absolutely know that a piece of equipment is or is not designed to be used in that configuration is, of course, to reference the manufacturer's instructions. They are going to be the ones that will dictate what edges it is acceptable to use on. However, ANSI, the ones that first, the ANSI committee that first instituted the leading edge testing requirements also mandates that the manufacturers clearly identify with symbols a retractable that is or is not rated for leading edge. In general, you will see non-leading edge and it may be manufacturer specific where it has a symbol with a red X or some other uh, marking that clearly identifies not acceptable use, whereas if it is, you will see a symbol such as this or other that will show is rated for leading edge. There's a lot more to that that you should always investigate and assure again that we are using the right tool for the job. And just because you're working at an edge, whether it's an unprotected side edge or a leading edge, you have to concern yourselves with the fact that if in the event of the fall, the line can make contact with the edge during the progression of the fall, you must consider it a leading edge condition, thus having the right tool for the job versus one that could potentially shear. However, just because you are working where you have an edge and that might be the device of choice, you'll still have to consider fall calculation and fall clearance because if you're only 12 feet up in the air and this device requires more than that of total fall clearance, you still haven't protected the worker because yes, it didn't shear on the edge, but they hit the ground, that's unacceptable. Not because of the law, because your worker hit the ground. A lot of times when we're talking leading edge or sharp edge, we're connecting our devices at, uh, at foot level. We could be taking a much greater than a six foot free fall. So we have to watch what our total fall clearance is going to be when we're working on leading edges, where we need to anchor our devices, what the charts for those manufacturers on fall clearance say about the amount of distance that's going to be needed when we're anchoring low. Is that device made to anchor right at foot level or is it uh, only made to anchor down maybe to knee level? What are the maximum arresting forces of that device when used in that situation? If it is 1,350 pounds where we're used to having a 900 pound device, then we would have to look at how is that going to affect the anchor points that we're connecting to as well as the structure we're connecting to. If we're using certified anchor points, anything that is designed to a two to one safety factor, if we designed that for 900 pounds and maybe we have an 1,800 pound anchor point that we've been using, and we're now using a device that when used on a leading edge is gonna, going to impart 1,350 pounds of force, we need to know how that's going to affect that anchor point, how that's going to work in that entire system. How far back from the edge we need to connect. The further away from the edge when we're working either on leading edge or sharp edge, the less overall fall clearance we're going to need if somebody falls and goes over that edge. So there's, there's a lot that has to be looked at with leading edge and sharp edge. It's up to the companies to be better educated on what leading edge hazards they have in their facilities or on their job sites, how they're identifying that as either a leading edge or a sharp edge. If we're working in the wind industry and we have a highly radiused uh, fiberglass edge, we probably don't have a cut hazard, but we have a leading, still have a leading edge hazard. If I'm an iron worker and I'm walking red iron tied off at foot level and I take a fall and strike an I-beam with my fall arrest equipment, I have a leading edge hazard, but I also have a sharp edge hazard where I need to make sure that I've identified that as a potential uh, area where I could have a, uh, a cut hazard that's there. Our qualified people and our competent people need to be on the lookout for these hazards and making sure that workers are protecting themselves and using the right equipment that's there.